the man who has won at least one playoff game in each of the first five seasons of his stellar professional career, Russell Wilson, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Russ? I'm doing great, man. Can't complain. Obviously, it's uh, another good thing to get another uh, win, but uh, we have a big opportunity this week going to Atlanta. Yeah, well, I guess the big first question for you is, was that ball intended for Doug Baldwin or <laughs> Jermaine Curse? Who was that ball intended for? Intended for whoever's going to catch it. Um, no, but uh, it was actually uh, it was actually supposed to go to Curse, and um, but uh, you know we at least we caught it. And it's a team game. We we found a way to make the play. Yeah, and I guess everyone was making one-handed grabs for you too. I mean, Paul Richardson was balling out something fierce in that game. Oh, they, you know, the, the receivers are making plays all day, um, and that's playoff time. We got to make those type of plays, and we got to be special, and and uh, that's what that's what it takes. Yeah, and I know, and uh, that that's that's the phrase that Pete Carroll's been saying ever since he's gotten into coaching, which is always compete. And you are the personification of that. When when was the first time when you first started coming up? Because there's going to be a lot of memory lane conversation with you going back to Atlanta this week. That was your first uh, playoff season where you were in Atlanta. Um, when was it the first time it, you realized that you did have a shot to start for the Seattle Seahawks, Russell? Well, when Coach drafted me, they actually called me and um, they told me I had a good shot. And um, so for me, that was kind of my first uh, realization that you know, they're going to give me an opportunity to play. But it, it didn't matter either way. I, I had to... Um, you know, for me, it's always a, a, a thought process of I'm going to do everything I can to be at my highest level, no matter what the circumstances are. And then uh, once I got here, I think I got here on May 10th or May 11th, um, in 2012. And, and uh, you know, we had rookie mini camp. You know, I had those first three days. And right after mini camp, they told me I was going to be competing for the starting job for sure. So um, that, that was a cool time, obviously. And I'm just grateful all the hard work pays off. And um, like I always say, there's no time to sleep. So you have to do everything you can to get up early and, and stay late nights and, and put the hard work in. Well, it's interesting you say there's no time to sleep. We, you, you were uh, featured on NFL Game Day Morning this past week on NFL Network. You had a conversation with my colleague Jeff Chidea. Uh, yeah. my, my jaw hit my jaw hit the floor, Russell, when I heard that you told him that when you were rehabbing from your knee injury this year, you were awakened once every hour and a half or two hours so you could rehab your knee. Is that is that is that the truth? That's the case. Yeah, every hour and a half I was, uh, you know, doing something. So, um, you know, I, I fall I fall asleep pretty quickly if I need to go. Um, but I, I just uh, what I would do is every hour and a half have the alarm go off and, you know, ice my ankle, ice my knee, and I had a lot going on at the time. So, um, just had to uh, do everything I could to, to be out in the field, and I, I didn't want to miss a practice. I didn't want to miss a moment. So it means too much to me. So how how do you are you a different person without sleep? Because I know I am. I mean, how did that? How did <laughs> How did well, you I don't, do that? I, don't get, I, don't, I don't get much anyway. I, I normally sleep about five or six hours max, you know. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, come, that's what I do, you know, throughout the week. And then come Friday and Saturday, um, you know, if the game's on Sunday, you know, come Friday, Saturday, I, I normally get 10, 10 to 12 hours. I just, I, that's where I put all my sleep in, right before the game. So I, come game day, I feel, I feel wide, wide, wide awake. Hmm. Russell Wilson joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And so when you're, I mean, did your did your your wife? I mean, did Ciara not have a problem with you waking up every ninety minutes? I know, you know. I mean, if that alarm goes off, my wife's sleeping there. She'd be just like, really, again? We're we're icing this knee again, this ankle again? Yeah, she she would help. She would help for the first couple hours, and then, and then she would she. <laughs> you're on your own. She'd be knocked out. Yeah, I'd be on my own after that. <laughs> then you're on your ball. I guess it's good uh, good prep for the baby that's coming to be awakened once every ninety minutes and two hours anyway for you, Russell. And uh, I guess I got to do my part now. Yeah, exactly. So now, I mean. <sighs> What's your memory of the, that, that Atlanta playoff game? That was your first year. I mean, you, you come off a playoff when you go into Atlanta. It's still Matt Ryan's only playoff win. What, what are your recollections of that day, Russell? Well, it, it, was, it was a great battle to the end, obviously. Um, one, one of the all-time great games, really. I, our ability to come back and, and show our resiliency and show um, our, our mental toughness and, and uh, you know, our capabilities of what we can do. Um, that, that was really, really big. And I, I think that um, obviously we took the lead with, I think, 31 seconds left or something like that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, then it, you know, they made a good play and kicked a field goal. So, um, you know, it, it was it was a tough environment. It was a great environment. It was um, it, it was a great game, uh, two great teams going after it. And, uh, you know, I have tons of respect for the Atlanta Falcons and, and, uh, and Matt Ryan and what he can do and, and all their great players that they have. We're moving. I have, I have a few friends on that team, you know, and Julio and, and Mohamed Sanu and and uh, Devontae Freeman. So those guys are great players. How do you know? Where do you know these guys from? 
Well, just being being around him, uh, you know, Muhammad Sanu, I got to know from IMG when we were training, coming out together, and uh, we we trained every day. I used to throw with him every day, and then uh, you know Julio and Devontae got to know. I've gotten to know, um, you know, through the Pro Bowl stuff, and and uh, those guys came out um, for. Uh, for when they came out here for to Seattle, we went to the Seattle Children's Hospital all together. So, um, just great guys and, and great competitors. What would another Super Bowl mean for you, Russell? Well, you know, it, it, all the hard work that you put into everything. You know, every year, the attention to detail, the the uh, the early mornings, the late nights, the the, uh, and the all the rehab, everything that we do, all the communication that it takes, all the all the tough days, all the good days. Um, you know. That means something to us, and I think it's a, lot, it's a lot of hard work to get put into it. It's it's a lot of sacrifice that our families, um, you know, allow us to have so much time doing something else and focusing on what, what we try to do. And, and I, I think it means a lot to this organization, obviously. Um, so um, that's our that's our mission, and obviously, is to to win it all. And uh, you know, we, we don't we don't um, you know play to come in second or third place. We we we're coming here to you know win the whole thing, and we just got to take one day at a time. No, I know. Look, I mean, and I know it's a team game, and you. You are the ultimate team player, but you, you personally, you, Russell Wilson, you, the guy who, who signed a, a long-term big money contract, you in a second uh, and a third shot to win it. I mean, what, what would it mean to you to hoist that trophy in this season, in this, in this situation for you? Well, I think it's, um, it's an accomplishment that you, that's definitely a team effort and that you, you're just grateful for, you know, and, uh, and I can remember the first time that we won. Um, you know, it was all the hard work. You know, and that's what that's what you get the joy out of. You know, from all the hard work with your teammates and all, and all that. And um, so, I think for um, for me personally, I think that's the, that's where you find the true joy of it um, because it, it means something to everyone else too as well. And and so, uh, let's just put it this way. Let me just if you mind me visualizing for you here, Russell. Okay. Yeah, Super, right. Okay. Super, Super Bowl Fifty One. There you are. Less than a minute to go. You're on the one-yard line. You need a touchdown to win. The, p- the play that comes in is a run play, but you see the defense sets up for a pass. Do you, do you go ahead and audible for that pass, Russell Wilson? You said the defense, you said the defense does what? The defense shows that it, it, it's susceptible to a pass. Do you audible oh, into yeah. the pass on that oh, yeah. one-yard line? Of course. I have, no, I, have no, I have no fear. I don't play with fear now. So um, whatever it takes to win. Well, I mean, obviously, there's no fear of failure, but that there is number 25 on the sideline, right? I mean, would you be able to have that conversation with him when it's all said and done? Yeah, we're going to score on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, that, it all depends on the result. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, we're going to score on that one. I, I got no fear. Um, you know, I have confidence in all the guys we got. You know, you got guys like Jimmy Graham and Doug Baldwin, and Paul Richardson, and Jermaine Kirsch, you know. And uh, then you also have a great running back in Thomas Rawls. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have all the confidence in the world in the guys that you have. Well, I guess that's a way of me sort of coming in the side door on this one. Just come straight in. I mean, is everything cool with you and the and and Richard and the defense and the offense going together, going into a big playoff game? Uh, I know you've been through a lot of battles together, but it just seems to me that that play keeps coming up, Russell. Oh no, man! There's no, uh, there's no, there's no worries with us, man. We we're um, we're committed to win. We're committed to one another. We're committed to the process. We're committed to what it takes to win and and, and, and each other. So mm-hmm. uh, there's no, um, there's nothing. I, I think the only reason why it comes up because people ask about it. <laughs> it's, it's, um, but uh, that's that's really the only reason. Did you ever have, did you have a conversation with Richard after that 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 moment on Thursday night football when we were on the building? Did you have a chat with him about that? About his, um, his not, take on not, it? Not really, not really. Just because there's no need. I mean, like I said, it's um, we all just want to win. We always want to. We, we all just want to play. I mean, we, we we did throw a touchdown on one. You know, two plays later, I think it was. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's not really a, a thing in my my opinion. Yeah, and, and obviously on fourth and you went up for it on fourth and one, and you threw it, and and then Richardson made that incredible one-handed grab. Would have been a pass interference anyway. So, uh, just walk me through your your visualization process as you're on that plane you're you're walking into that building this weekend it's a big huge playoff game again it's possible should Aaron Rodgers win that you get a, another home game what 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 is your process as you walk into that building in Atlanta Russell when you visualize success you visualize um, whatever it takes you visualize a great 60 minutes plus more if you need to and uh, you know you visualize this one play at a time you know you don't think about anything anything bigger or anything more than that and you just go after it just like always and and uh, you know we get, get everything I got you know every play I know we will as a team and and I can't wait for um, 
uh, for, the, for the kickoff and, and ready to play ball. Last one for you, Russell. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Deshaun Watson's performance in the national championship game and 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 his journey traveled uh, and 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 what you thought of 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 him and his pro readiness in your estimation. Uh, well, well, gut- gutsy performance, and the tape doesn't lie. Um, a great football player, a guy that um, has clutchness in him. You can see that he has a clutch gene, and, and uh, you know he's a tremendous competitor. Um, and and uh, you know he, he he exudes poise. You know, so you can tell that he has great talent. So uh, Deshaun Watson would be a great football player. I. I um, I truly believe in him and what he can do, and, um, and I think he's training with my guy Ryan Flaherty too. So it, okay. he'll be uh, he'll be ready to roll. There you go. And do, and do you have any last advice for him as he's going to go through this talent evaluation process? No doubt, get picked apart in a similar way that you wound up being a third round selection. Uh, right, I, think, I think just keep loving the game. Don't don't worry about where you get picked. You know, at the end of the day, if you get per, picked first, seventy fifth, or or last, you know, uh, at the end of the day, when you when you put the hard work in, um, great things will great things will come to your come your way. Russell, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. We'll see you down the road, maybe in Houston. Always great talking to you, Rich. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. You bet you got it. That's right. Russell Wilson. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.